All right, so I'm going to talk about the concept of remote story mapping. And I think we can back up a little bit and break this into some parts. But I think the important part of remote story mapping is this idea of having shared meaning and doing this digitally. So I have here a map of the US. These are some of the teams that I collaborate with. I have a team in Seattle, San Diego. I have a team in Utah and Florida. I have to figure out ways to work with these people to generate new ideas. Um, and that's something that I think is new for me. Our team worked through this book here, written by Jeff Patton. I think everybody should read it. It's excellent. Talks through this idea of story mapping. But the core idea behind it is this gathering of shared meaning. And so we build artifacts to do that. That's why we do that. On the same hand, I just recently listened to a UIE seminar about the idea of designing remotely. And he concepted these different types of remote teams. And my team's kind of sitting here in the middle with this A and the Bs around it. But the idea is that these teams are all over the place, right? And I have to bring them together. But it's really about this single artifact. And it's this object that I'm trying to create. This is a story map that I worked through recently with my team. And we did this digitally. But I had to do this in two different ways. And so that leads to this experiment, which I'm talking about today. What works better, working local or working remote? And what are the differences? So I kind of conducted this by working with the same team in two different ways, partly remote, partly local. I kept three parameters the same. One, everybody is able to communicate. Everybody has a shared communication. And every object lives inside of an item. So it's a post-it note. It's some form in which it becomes physical. So here's my team. We're working. As you can see, everybody's looking at this story map. That's the story map up there on the wall. This is the first half of my experiment. People are talking and dialoguing. It's very much like the design projects that I've been used to in my decade career. So there are some positives. There are some negatives. I kind of broke these into two parts. So it, the thing that's really nice about bringing people together is that it makes it an event. It's got a time box urgency. Everybody's in one place. But something kind of happens when you put people in one room. They, they kind of have a casual discussion. It's not overwhelming. It's kind of natural. But there's some cost to that. It's literally costly, as in my team is coming from across the country. You have to pay for those plane tickets. Planning those schedules is ex extremely complicated. And you kind of have to accept that it's done when it's done, when people go back to their environment. That's what it is. In reverse, when I worked with my team remotely, I kind of set up this schedule, which is what this story mapping is, trying to keep me in orderly line. It was much more like a normal, natural meeting that we have remotely. And we had this map in the background. It was much faster to function. We could move things around. We explored different tools to see what would work. Um, you have a little bit more creative control. At one point, we were like, you know what? These are a different group. And I was able to just click on all of them and change them from yellow to green. Um, that's pretty incredible. You can't really do that with post-it notes. If they're yellow, they're yellow. And on the opposite hand, you know, it's really easy for people to kind of pull out of that conversation. We had more people in this meeting than we did in the prior one. And people get distracted. And there's some trade-offs in trying to learn a new tool. Um, you know, so there's kind of some ups and downs. So I thought I'd maybe break this down into some things that maybe you can be a little more applicable to your own specific work. Um, so some of these other insights that I have based on this process. Um, first thing is play with different tools. There are a lot of new tools. So you have real-time board, Murally, Lucidchart, all these ways of creating artifacts together. Um, don't be afraid to play with them, but do it before you go into the meeting. It's much better to do that. Um, stay patient. We're all kind of learning this. This is a process. It's not something that I've done in the past. It's nice to be able to bring everybody together. But if you're doing something remotely, don't expect it to go perfect. It's not going to. Um, you're trying to learn something, so be ready to do that. I made that map that was up there a minute ago. I made five versions of it before I was happy with where it went. And so in that same regard, embrace the ambiguity. It's not going to be clear the entire time. You're trying to figure how, out what this communication looks like. And you're, kind of, you're in the frontier of what you're doing as a designer. So don't be afraid to do that. And maybe more than in a physical environment, digitally, you really have to share ownership. I'm really used to, I come from a graphic design background. I'm used to making things perfect. And in this environment, I just simply can't do that. And then finally, I think the best thing that you can remember to do is just to have fun. It's really hard. You have to be a little bit more overt and more specific about having fun digitally. It doesn't just come naturally. You have to kind of explicitly do it. I have a dog here in the middle. And the reason I do that is because my dogs will play with each other. And they will bow down and give you a physical signal. That's not there when you're working digitally. So make it overt and have fun. Everybody likes to have fun. So thank you. Follow me on Twitter. Follow Ignite on Twitter. Have a good night.